Hello everyone, uh, my name is Sunny Dua and uh, I run the uh, blog on uh, VMware which is uh, VExpress uh, and I'm sure if you've, if you've been to VExpress you've been you will notice that uh, recently I've been writing about uh, vCenter operations manager quite a bit in fact I have a whole dedication dedicated sec section on my blog which is VExpress which I'm which I've just opened on the screen right now and which is on VC Ops. So if you go to vexpress.blogspot.n or .com, uh, you can go to this VC Ops page where you will see uh, the vCenter operations manager ramblings which I have been doing. So there are a number of articles which I've been writing on VC Ops. Uh, there's a specific series which I started, uh, which I call the VC Ops uh, 5.x tutorial. And if I click here, it opens up a series uh, which has articles starting from part 1 to part 10 uh, which is as simple as uh, you know deploying VC ops installing it doing the basic configuration doing the licensing and uh, following the basic configuration policies to ensure that you have a robust installation uh, then I've also talked about data retention policy authentication uh, methodologies etc I want you to take it one step further and not talk about uh, how we can go ahead and use VC ops uh, for capacity management and uh, we basically wanted to discuss various policies which are available within VC ops for that right and uh, that has been a common question that how do you configure all the policies which are available in VC ops and to do that uh, I will quickly get onto my lab uh, which is this instance in this lab I have a virtual center where I am uh, running a couple of ESX servers um, most of them uh, the other ESX servers or the clusters which you see uh, which is the prod cluster which is the production ESX servers the rest of the clusters which you see over here are uh, uh, just nest, nested, uh, nested ESXi virtual machines uh, which are uh, here for demos uh, in my prod cluster is where I am running most of my virtual machines in fact there are a bunch of them and uh, they are just running on these two ESX servers now this particular environment is being monitored by the vCenter operations manager and uh, this is uh, the lab vCenter which you can see which is being monitored here now uh, basically if you look at uh, uh, the various scores which you get in terms of uh, health risk efficiency and the colors and and the badges and the uh, and the other scores which are uh, related to uh, the risk and capacity they're all driven by something called policies in VC ops right so if your monitoring policy which you've applied is incorrect or if it's not configured properly and according to your environment's requirement then there are chances that you will not have uh, correct information uh, coming out of these badges or in your reports which you get in VC ops specifically around uh, capacity and time right and to configure this uh, these policies uh, you basically go ahead and log into your vCenter operations manager as an admin and uh, then go to the configuration tab right over here now if you go to configuration tab you get uh, three options on the left hand side manage policies manage group type manage display settings today we will be specifically talking about managing policies and in this instance of VC ops you can see I uh, you can see that I just have a single policy which is the default policy I can select the default policy and click on the edit button or I can just click on it and it will automatically open up in this editable window or wizard which I can run through now VC ops uh, comes with this default policy out of the box and uh, it's always important that you go ahead and change this default policy or create a new policy uh, based on your requirements just to ensure that you have the right numbers in here and the right configuration parameters in here to uh, to have the right output coming out of uh, the capacity engine of VC ops right okay so uh, let's go through one of the uh, all the options over here one by one and then we'll see uh, what are the recommended settings and why okay so in this case the name of the policy is default policy this is hard coded into the system you cannot really get rid of it it's the system default settings 
and then it is associated with everything in your environment so this is where you do an association and I will talk about it uh, when uh, I create a new policy so I will just cancel this and I'll show you how you can create a new policy from the default policy or you can edit the existing policy so if I click on the plus sign over here I can create a new policy and I can name it test one and then I can give it a description this is a demo policy and then I can inherit or clone this policy from various out-of-the-box policies available in the VC ops instance now remember these policies are or out-of-the-box policy settings are only available with VC ops 5.7.1 and uh, above uh, is what I remember from the release notes uh, so if you have a previous version which is 5.6 or 5.7 per se then you need to upgrade it to the latest version uh, which is 5.8.1 as of now and uh, you will have all these options available now I can either select one of these so let's say if I am creating a policy for production environment I say production and it gives me a message it basically says that all the fields in the next steps which is all these steps two three four five six on the left hand side will be populated automatically uh, on the basis of what VMware has given uh, you in the production environment policy it basically canned into the system and if you say yes it will apply all those policies and then if you say uh, finish it will associate it with uh, the objects which you chose so if, let's say if I say yes over here then is when I have to choose the associations when I say associations I need to choose a particular folder or a particular uh, or a particular function on which I want to apply that policy so let me just go to my folders and for fun select a particular folder so let's say I select ratworks as the folder on which I want to apply this policy and I click on add and then I can just without touching anything else click on finish because everything else is automatically configured by the VMware given policy now if you notice then ratworks folder will have two policies applied to it one is the default policy and the other is the test one policy which is the policy which will be uh, considered while doing all the calculations of capacity it will be test one because it is ranked higher on this page so test one is the first policy on this page so that will be applied to the object and if that object is also participating in the default policy then uh, that particular policy or the default policy will not apply to that object so whatever is higher in the ranks over here and I can just reorder the policies if I want to by pressing this button right I can just put them up or down in the system right now I have just one single policy if I have multiple policies I can reorder them as and when I want now understand this that the default policy will always be the last in the system so if I have test 1 test 2 test 3 as three different policies and then I have sunny as a folder which I'm monitoring then if it's if it's under all the three different policies uh, then it will only use the characteristics of test one policy because that is ranked number one in this particular page right so that's how the policy ranking and the application works I will just get rid of this test policy because I don't like uh, choosing the can't policies instead I like creating my own policy which also helps me understand how these capacity calculations are being done okay so uh, let's look at the default policy and I'll run you through all the systems so by now we understand what is the policy details under which we have general and association the next tab uh, or the next configuration option we have is configure badges right so I'll just go ahead and get to the badges tab now if you look at the badges over here this is where you configure the infrastructure badge thresholds uh, when you say infrastructure batch thresholds these badges are for objects which are everything other than virtual machines and custom groups that you create so if you look at the left hand side these infrastructure batch thresholds will apply on the world will apply on the vCenter level will apply on the data center level and then the cluster level um, 
so if you look at or the and the data stores as well for, for that matter right so any changes which you do over here uh, will impact the colors of the badges when you select these particular objects on the left hand side in the inventory pane so if i if i want to go ahead and so for example like i, I want to say that i want an alert or i want the badge color to become uh, uh, let's say uh, orange when uh, which is the one which I'm selecting right now when the workload of a particular ESX server is uh, 50 as calculated as 50 so as soon as that happens then the workload level or the badge becomes orange and if that workload goes ahead and shoots up to 75 I want that uh, or, I'm sorry, I think the first color is yellow the second one is orange sorry for that yeah so as soon as uh, the the workload level moves to 75 I want the color to turn to orange and then similarly I want the color to turn to red as soon as the workload goes to 95 now uh, having said that you also have the option to go ahead and turn off a particular uh, a particular badge if you wish to so what you need to do is you just need to double click on that particular badge so let's say if I want to turn off the workload level medium badge I can just double click on it and it will automatically uh, it will automatically lose the color it will become transparent which basically means it is no longer applicable so in in this scenario I would just have the workload turning from yellow and will remain yellow till the turn ti time it uh, turns or gets to a number of 95 and turns red so I can do that I can do those nitty gritties and changes and I can switch on and switch off uh, the colors or the batch levels which I want so this is how you set up uh, the health risk and efficiency uh, the major badges and then the minor badges which is workload anomalies faults time remaining capacity remaining stress level waste and density badges and the scores which are associated to them right now you can do that for infrastructure batch thresholds as I said and then you can also do that for a VM batch thresholds so if you want to set it up for specific for virtual machines which you are monitoring through that policy you can also set up the batch thresholds for that uh, similarly if you have a custom group which you are monitoring in that policy then you might want to change the batch thresholds according to how you want them to be so that covers the configure badges option the next option is com configure capacity and time and uh, primarily this is the reason why I'm doing this video uh, because I've seen a lot of articles floating around I've seen a lot of a uh, uh, lot of uh, screenshots and stuff like that but uh, I believe for for somebody who who understands virtualization as a technical administrator might not understand the nitty-gritties of uh, capacity uh, and how capacity is being calculated in VC ops so the whole idea behind this video was to ensure that we can go ahead and show you uh, the, those calculations I will continue in part 2 uh, where I would talk about the capacity and time remaining uh, thank you so much uh, you have a good day